So I thought it was about time for another BTS style video. Today I'm gonna to show you how I edit my thumbnails because I'm literally uploading a video right now and as it's uploading because my internet sucks, I have time to create the thumbnail. And if I'm up late, you know, I'm like using my time wisely so I don't like go to my bed and pass out and then forget to post the video. But anyway, that's like another story for another video here. So I'm gonna get into editing and just kind of show you what my mindset is and all my tips and tricks, I guess. But before we continue here, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions as the algorithm likes that, and we'll push my videos to more people. So as you can see here, I am uploading a video and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Photoshop and you can see the uh, thumbnails I've been working on or some of them are in the works. I'm gonna create new and I'm going to create a 720p composition somehow, someday. Here we go, here it just popped up. Here are my settings if you wanna see it. I'm not gonna even title it, I'm gonna click create. Now we have a blank canvas here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my media folder where I have the photos that I took for the thumbnail. Um, so I found the one that I already want. Uh, it was the best one out of the horrible ones that I took. I took like 15,000 just to make sure I capture the right one. So we're gonna drag it onto the composition thing here. We're going to click the check mark and I'm also going to resize it. So I'm gonna do maybe like 19%, there we go. I'm also going to rotate it all the way around till we hit, I think it's gonna be negative 180. You can also type it in here in Photoshop. And then from here, I'm gonna start editing the photo a little bit sometimes, or I used to put it into Lightroom initially, but I like to just you know edit it in Photoshop most of the time. And then once I'm finished it, I airdrop it to my iPad Pro, where I use Lightroom on there, because I just like using the pencil and everything. But we're gonna make some adjustments here. I'm gonna bring the brightness up. And I'm not even concerned with the way the screens look, because I do something called uh, superimposing, where I take screenshots, and then I just kinda you know position them onto the picture. So it looks you know larger than life or better. You know, because you can't really capture a perfect, you know, screen. You know, the exposure is always going to be kind of a little bit off, I guess. So um, there we go. That is a nice um, position for this picture. I might um, uh, make it smaller a little bit just to make some room for text. And I'm going to also going to click this little link button to keep it, you know, constrained or to scale. So we're going to have this right there in the center. Okay. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline um, uh, the main subject of the uh, thumbnail picture here. So I'm going to use this um, selection tool. I might even try the magnetic. The magnetic is, you know, a good tool, but it doesn't always work because it will sometimes kind of trip over things and just make the overall experience of editing um, a lot, you know, worse, I guess, because it won't get everything you quite want and it will select the wrong things. And see, like, it's not getting the edge of the iPad Pro, so I'm not going to do that. I'm actually just going to use the straighter, the polygonal lasso tool. So I'm gonna zoom in, you know, command plus, that kind of thing. We're gonna start with the pencil tip right here. You can really start anywhere you want, but I'm gonna work my way around um, this device. We're just about done here and boom. Now I have a selection of the main subject. I'm gonna make sure my layer is selected. I'm gonna copy and paste and boom, now I have this just isolated. And the reason I do this is because, and I'll make a little copy here and I'll tell you why in a sec. Um, I just want to have this so I don't have to, you know, reselect it. So I always make copies. So when I'm like messing around, you always want to have the original, you know, just kind of hidden away. And then you want to have like a copy that you can mess with and, you know, screw up if you know what I'm saying. So what I do is I will also, you know, make a copy of the, you know, background layer. I want to, you know, bring out this more, make it pop a little more. So I'm going to take the copy of the background layer with this wood table and I'm going to lower the brightness a little bit just to kind of add contrast, maybe even add some contrast here as well. So now we have some separation, but here's the thing. We have kind of sharp, you know, corners. It doesn't look really great right now, but what I can do is I can make another copy of this, you know, isolated iPad layer. And what I'll do is, I'll go to the adjustment layer or the adjustment, you know, tab right here. I'm going to go to exposure. I'm going to bring it all the way to 20 or, you know, 100% or whatever it is. And then I'm going to go to filters, blurs, and then Gaussian blur. And I'm sorry if I'm going a little fast. I'm just kind of you're just going at my regular pace here. But what I do is, is I create this kind of glow, which, you know, I've seen in a lot of other thumbnails and I've used it in some other videos. And, you know, those videos have good click through rate. You know, people like the thumbnails. So this is something that I incorporate in most of my thumbnails. It kind of adds a little, you know, cool aspect to it. And people tend to like it. And it kind of shows your prowess, I guess. It kind of tells people that you care and you, you know, took the time to create this effect. And it's not that hard, you know. You, you have to isolate, you know, what you are, you know, really focusing on here and then you make a copy underneath it bring the exposure all the way up blur it out and then you kind of get this really nice glow effect hopefully you can follow what i'm saying if you want a more in-depth tutorial on how i create thumbnails how i shoot them everything leave me a comment i'm just you know kind of just getting this done here 
but hopefully once again you can follow what I'm saying. So next up I want to focus on the screens here which don't look too great right now but I have a screenshot that I took from my iPad mini here which I will drop in and sometimes you know you have to alter the perspective I'll show you that in a second here but really in this case all I have to do is oh you know what I'm actually going to use the tool because it's slightly off center or skewed a little bit and you'll see why I'm going to do this in a sec so you know make sure it's all scaled up we're going to click the check mark I'm going to go to edit I'm going to go to the perspective warp tool and you just take this and you why is my mouse acting up god you take this I'm going to kill my mouse you take this and you just drag over the image my mouse is being stupid so you take this and you drag it over the image that you want to manipulate you click warp and what I do is I lower the opacity so I can kind of see what I'm doing and I bring the corners to the actual corners on here and you just kind of bring it here this is honestly the best way to do this without having to resize with the actual resize to it it allows you to be very precise and as you can see here I can line it up with the icons and everything I'm gonna zoom in here just to make sure I'm being as precise as possible so I'm gonna bring this over again as you can see I'm gonna line up the apps with the other apps and you know the time here with the time and and yeah I think that's about good enough so I'm going to click the check mark done and then I'm going to bring the opacity up. Sometimes I will also alter the contrast. But yeah, you can see how much better this looks. I'm going to just get off the selection here. You have this and you have this and it just looks way, way better, you know, larger than life once again. But the exposure just looks well. You have more detail with this little side view here. I'm also going to do that with the iPad Pro in the background here. I have a screenshot from that somewhere. So I'll look in my downloads folder. I'm going to here is the screenshot that I want. And although it's not exactly what I want, you know, it's not exactly matched up here, I can still, you know, line up some uh, aspects of the photo. So, so we're going, yeah, so it is correct there. I'm gonna just bring it down a little bit. Um, check mark, we're gonna go to edit, we're gonna go to the perspective warp, we're going to go here. Um, I know I'm going too fast and I will definitely do another tutorial, but this is, you know, how I make my thumbnails at the pace I usually do. So we're going to lower the opacity once again here and we're going to kind of guess where things are, you know, line it up as best as we can. So I'm going to line up the time here. This is actually kind of difficult, but I have a good way of, you know, trying to line it up as best as I can. Um, I'm actually going to bring the opacity up a little bit. Uh, so we got it lined up with the bottom. And I can actually line it up with this, you know, sidebar tool or the sidebar, whatever it's called, the widget thing in iPadOS. And that really does help me, you know, get this in its right place. So that looks good. So yeah, that seems about right. I can also use the wallpaper too because it does have the same wallpaper and that does give a lot of, you know, points where you can kind of match things up. So yeah, that's the best I can do here. I'm going to bring the opacity up um, to 100% as you could imagine. Boom, now that that's aligned, I'm gonna start erasing um, most of the screenshot uh, off the iPad mini here. I'm gonna do just kind of a rough job and then I'm gonna get the corners more precise. Um, this is kind of a unique shot. I don't usually have to do this, but yeah, this is what I'm gonna do to get rid of the screenshot. I'm also going to go to the corners really quick and I'm going to you know erase the uh, little you know squared off corner because you know as you know the iPad Pro has a rounded corner. I didn't quite get the wallpaper totally lined up perfectly, so I'm gonna also erase that. But it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, so long as it looks decent enough, um, you're fine. So there we go. So now I'm going to actually hide this layer and I'm going to select, or make a selection around the iPad mini. So around the edges of it here. So, so now that we have a selection, I'm going to bring back the iPad screenshot and then I'm going to erase what's inside of it. And yeah, here we go. Now we have the iPad back to where it should be. So yeah, it's not exactly perfect, but I mean, the thumbnail is going to be smaller. You can't really see the imperfections, but yeah, here we go. We have superimposed screens on the iPads now and a darker background. We have an aura around it. I'm actually going to change the uh, background color sort of. So I'm going to go to image adjustments and then color balance. And then you can kind of adjust, you know, what colors are going on here. So I might do, I actually might duplicate two layers here and you'll see what I'm doing here. I'm going to do the first one orange and the other one blue. So we're gonna do adjustments. We're gonna do color balance. I'm gonna bring out the reds. I'm gonna bring out the yellows making an orange color. I'm gonna see if the highlights make a huge difference. Yeah, yep, so we're making it super orange 
and we'll do that and I might lower the brightness too I'm also going to hide that really quick and I'm gonna do you know a similar kind of like turquoise color here that's with the iPad um, pros wallpaper so we're gonna go to color balance we're gonna go to the shadows we're gonna do some cayenne we're gonna do some blue and see how I'm matching it up you know how to how that looks so that's good enough so I'm gonna do that and then I'm going to sort of blend these together so I'm gonna erase this top layer which is gonna be the orange layer um, I'm going to bring the eraser tool to 0% hardness. I'm going to bring this up a lot, this size of this tool. And I'm going to, um, yeah, I'm going to bring the blues out here. And I'm going to kind of do a diagonal sort of erase pattern here, I guess. And yeah, that is looking good. You know, you have some contrast and you have some color going on. And it's interesting and it kind of reflects, you know, what's going on in the picture. I also have to erase so I'm part of this screenshot here it's still kind of showing up on the iPad but yeah that's a thumbnail and we're gonna get to the next step here in a moment also I didn't want to make the screen recording bigger than I had to be you want to add text that is advantageous you know that will get you you know better click-through rates so I have iPad Pro versus iPad mini I also apply something called a drop shadow onto it so it's sort of like a outline which just makes the text more defined and readable i also put a little ipad os thing here because this is popular people will click on this just to you know hear about ipad os but yeah this is the text setup that i got up and this is the overall format and now i'm going to export it so i'm going to do export i usually do quick as png and then i'm going to save it to a thumbnail folder so i have my lacy external hard drive we're going to go to my thumbnails and i'm just going to call this um, mini v pro I usually, you know, have a name for it. It's good for organization. We're gonna click save. So now that I have the photo exported, I have my iPad Pro here with the pencil and I'm going to airdrop this image from my thumbnails folder over to my iPad. So boom, it's gonna show up here in my photos someday. Here it is. Okay, so we're gonna go into Lightroom and then we're gonna select this photo. Uh, we're gonna just go into the adjustments here. So I'm gonna see how uh, exposure plays well or plays out with this. So I think maybe a little more might be good. Um, you can also hold down on the image to see the before and the after. So yeah, more exposure definitely does do a little bit for it. A little in increased contrast might do some good. We're gonna go into the color. I don't think I'm gonna adjust the temperature because I kind of liked it the way it was. So we're gonna keep it at zero. Hello, zero someday there we go um, i'm going to go to saturation see if that i'm going to bring it up just a tiny bit maybe like plus three we're going to go to fx i love the texture um quality it just makes things look a little bit more textured really it just kind of makes things more contrasty and sharp looking we're going to do clarity that's another great effect so you can see here i can go to the before and the after it just makes it a little more exciting and defined we're also going to add some sharpness so yeah in most cases this is like extra editing that you probably wouldn't do on like an actual picture but you want it to just look great and you know like a little small form factor which is you know a thumbnail it's just kind of shrunk down but you want it to look as best as it can so here's the before here's the after i'm going to go into color and i'm going to adjust the a single color you know saturation so i can like play around with the saturation of the blues here so i might you know increase it decrease it luminance too so i can like go back to this teal sort of color and just kind of play around with that so i might bring it up a tiny bit i can go over to the oranges and adjust the saturation of that so i might bring it up you know a significant amount just to make the thumbnail pop a little more and um yeah that's about it i think i might adjust the whites make them a little whiter here just to you know bring up more contrast to make the text look a little bit better and other than that i think that's about it so here's the before here's the after it just pops a little bit more i'm gonna click done or actually i'm gonna go back to that i'm gonna share this i'm gonna go share and then i'm going to go to hello i'm gonna go to maximum available we're gonna airdrop it over to my imac hello maybe if it's gonna show up that would be really great airdrop here we go noah's imac and I just received it on my iMac, and then I'm going to put it into my video. Custom thumbnail, I'm gonna go to my downloads, I'm gonna drag this over here. Sorry for the potato audio quality with that Lightroom um, a little tutorial there, that's horrible, I apologize, my mic was just facing down, and I'm not gonna redo that because I thought I explained it well enough. But yeah, that is how I make a thumbnail here. I'm gonna switch around the camera. 
So yeah, this has been another BTS style video. I hope this offered some insight as to how I create my content. I hope this helped some of you guys out. And hopefully I didn't go too fast if you want another tutorial or, or more in-depth tutorial about how I shoot my thumbnails, edit them, you know, the whole shebang. Let me know. I'd love to make that as well. And yeah, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions, and subscribe for more content like this. And as always, I'm Noah and I will catch you all in the next one.